All right, we're back. We're in notes 13. We're going to be on page two. Um, we're talking about Euler's method, and we saw Euler's method is just using tangent lines over and over again, preferably on very small changes in x, right? So we went from 1 to 1.2, huge as far as calculus is concerned. Better to go 1 to 1.1 and then from 1.1 to 1.2. It's like instead of jumping all the way across, you're going to like skip across. And in theory, you get a better result that way. Um, so a perfect thing, well, not a perfect thing, but a better thing would be cut it up into a thousand steps, right? Instead of going from one to 1.2, do like 0.2 divided by a thousand and then do it a thousand times. And you should be very accurate at that point. That's the fundamental idea. Let's take a look at this. So, um, oh, I already wrote it here. Let me erase that and I'll write it again. Um, so what we want to do is come up with like the idea behind this. And there's, there's a notational thing that I think I'm going to change here as we go. But we start out with an initial condition. So the initial condition, just like with um, Newton's method, you got to have like an initial guess at to like what's happening. If you don't have an initial guess, you basically can't write your tangent line and then uh, you're, you're off. So we need an initial given point. If we have a point, what we can do is we can write the tangent line at that point. So this, the tangent line is going to be, uh, I'm using a weird notation. I'm just going to use f prime of xy, right? So y0 we have. Um, f prime of x0, y0, we have. And then um, x0, we have. The only thing we don't have here is x1. But since we're going to divide up the whole region evenly, uh, we actually know that uh, you know, x1 minus x0 equals x2 minus x1 equals x3 minus x2 equals dot, dot, dot. They're all just delta x. And we know delta x. We're going to decide delta x ahead of time. So delta x is not a problem. Um, we actually know what it is. And so this is delta x. So we're really just doing the original y value plus the derivative at the original point times delta x. Then what we do is we want to find the next point. So this gives us y1. And x1 is just delta x away from x0. So we also know x1. Then you take those, you plug them in, you do a tangent line. This will be delta x again. So this is the previous y value, the previous x value, the previous y value. And then this is always delta x. And then you just keep going. In general, to get a new y value, what you do is the old y value, the previous y value, plus here I wrote delta. I think it would be better if I used d. So I'm going to say dy. Because we're approximating the change. Delta y is usually the actual change. I mean, it's the actual change in our, um, it should be like delta y sub i, I guess, uh, would be the, the right way of saying it, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to say dy now, dy. Um, so dy is always the derivative at the previous point times delta x. Delta x and dx are going to be the same value, so you don't actually need to worry about that. So to implement, and we're going to do it so that you don't have to worry about the theoretical parts of that all that much. Um, to actually do it, you need a couple of things. You need an actual point on the function, you need the derivative of the function, and you need to know the step size or how many steps you're going to be using. Those are all key. Let's see um, if we can do one. The only other caveat, and it's a big one, is you must use approximately equal to for your solution because you're not finding the value. You're approximating the value. So you've got to do that also. As long as you got that, you're going to be good. All right, let's see. We're going to always use a table. So the table you set up is always going to look like this. It's going to be perfect. I'm going to change this to dy, though, because I've decided in the middle of the video that I would prefer that. Um, so let's see if we can do it. So first, this is our initial point, right? And then this is our derivative. Our derivative has x's and y's in it. So this is kind of weird. We're not totally used to that, except when we did differential equations and we solved them. Uh, that came up a lot, right? But this is not separable. So like, oh, I don't know. We don't know how to solve this just yet. Just yet, but we will soon. Um, so this is our derivative. And we're going to approximate the y value when x is 2 using a step size of 0.5. So this 0.5 right here, this is delta x. The number one thing people forget is delta x. Like, don't forget to multiply in a factor of delta x. All right, so we put our initial point. This is delta x. Maybe I'll highlight that in a specific color. Delta x. Here's your delta x, delta x, delta x. Never forget your delta x. Um, so 
we do delta x, and then what we're doing is we're subbing in to this using these points. And that's where it comes from, right? So for the next one, uh, I had to take these values and plug them in to dy dx. I hate when it double taps there. Um, and then you simplify it, you get this. So the next y value is going to be the old y value plus the change. So it's going to be 2.5. 2.5. Maybe, I mean, I could write it. It's going to be 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5. All right, so then we're going to do delta x, and we're going to take x and y and plug them into the derivative, which just says add them together. So that's 1 plus 2.5 is 3.1 half, and then 3.5 is 7 halves. So I'm up to 7 fourths, which is uh, 1.75. I don't know if it's better to just use fractions or decimals. So this would be the old value, 2.5 plus the new value. Uh, sorry, the old y plus the dy, the approximate change in y, 1.75, which is 3. 4.25 is getting gross. 0.5, we're going to add these together because we're plugging into um, dy dx. Whew, what is this? This is 1 half, 3, three halves plus 16, 17 fourths. Golly. Um, so that's 23 fourths, 20, I think it's 23 eighths. Okay, uh, and then this was 17 fourths plus 23 eighths, which would be 34, 57, it might be 57 eighths, perhaps. So then I would say that I think that y of two is approximately 57 over eight. Should we check that on the calculator? Do I remember all of the notation for Euler's method on a calculator right now? Probably not, but what I do remember is that you can use the graph page. So I will use a graph page to check this. So follow along, everybody. Um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna add a new problem. Graph page, press menu. We gotta change it to differential equations. So graph entry, edit, differential equations, option eight. Put it in, so it's x plus. Now the weird thing is when you're in y1, you need to use y1 as the y value because uh, the next thing is called y2 and it'll be y2s and so on. I'm gonna fill this in with zero, one, because that's my initial condition. Press tab and then press tab again to get here and I'm gonna press enter so that I can change some of the settings. Uh, that's not right. I'm gonna press, so, okay, so, oh my gosh, everything is going wrong. So it's graphing it. Um, I'm gonna go, I need to get over there. I just pressed to the right a bunch of times. I press enter. Okay, that's what I wanted. So you gotta get over to those dots and then press enter. So Euler, iterations between, we don't care about this, we don't care about this, we don't care about this, or this. Um, oh, we do care about that. Plot step, we want it to be 0.5. Plot step is the only thing that we need to change. And then I'm gonna press okay. Okay, so what, why did I do this? Now I'm gonna trace. So menu, option five, graph trace. And I'll press zero to get to the point zero one, right? That's our initial condition. Now if I move to the right, so I'm gonna press to the right, it's gonna go by that step size, which was 0.5 when we did it. So if I go one over, it should, make, it should take me to 0 0.5, 1 0.5. I'm reading it off the table, and it does. If I do it again, it should take me to one comma 2.5. So it's gonna be 0.5 over, and then we take the, the 1.5 that we have and we add dy. So it takes us to 1 comma 2.5. If I do it again, it'll be 1.5. It should be 1.5, 4.25 if I did it right. And it is. And then the next one should be 2 comma 57 eighths, which is uh, what? 56 would be 7. Uh, so 7.125, I think. And there we go, so we got it. So this is how you can check it on a graph, which I think is actually enough. Like this is, this is a good way to check. I'm gonna show you another way that the calculator has Euler's built in, um, but this is definitely a good way to go. So I'm gonna go back to the notes. We got this right. Let's see what, um, 
this is like uh this is kind of it i mean if you if you get what we did we we got it um so you need to know this you need to know the table so the table is acceptable work and it's the work you're going to do you need to know to use approximately equal to uh that's that is like you need that um and then eventually maybe on the next page i don't really know yeah we're going to learn how to solve this differential equation which is very cool. So um, I'm going to end this here and I'll be back in the next video to try to do that. So I will see you there.